Hello there everyone and welcome back to Let's 9 Day Pikmin. On the previous episode we got 5 out of 8 ship pieces in the Forest of Hope. And we could go back there and get the remaining 3, even though we're not really supposed to do that yet. Which basically means that getting them would be a pain in the ass, but it's doable. But it's annoying, so I'd rather go here, to the Forest Naval. Which is probably my favorite area in this game. I just like the layout of it. And the first half of this day is pretty insane. Now, already, I left 8 Pikmin at that wall, which is basically going to result in perfect timing and perfect numbers. It'll make sense. I have a good reason for doing that. Anyway, right here we have Shearwigs. Shearwigs are basically Sheargrubs, you know, the white and purple guys from the Forest of Hope. Except they start flying when you get them down to half health, and then they regenerate, but not really a big deal. Now that other enemy that is carrying the Shearwig, that guy is called a Breadbug. And he'll try to carry random small things back to his little nest. Now he has a ship piece, and if you carry him back to base, like I'm doing right now, he will almost die. You have to hit him once with a Pikmin to get his health down a little bit, and then he'll die back at base, and this ship piece will appear in your base, which is very convenient. Now right here, I was a little hesitant to go past 45 because I needed to reassure myself that I was throwing tw 25 Pikmin up here. I also needed to make sure that all of the Pikmin were actually working on a bridge. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to wait for more time. I just have to wa waste time waiting for them to finish when I get back to them. And I just don't want to deal with that. Having stuff like that happen is annoying. Anyway, right there we have a Wally Walk. I'm not going to kill that guy. I just want to get him out of the way, so he doesn't kill my Pikmin when I'm carrying this guy back. This guy is called the Puffstool. He's a really easy boss enemy, but he's also a jerk. The way he attacks is that he lets out a gas cloud. If you let him get back up, he lets out a gas cloud. And that turns your Pikmin into evil Pikmin that try to kill you. But he's also a jerk for another reason. In this game, there's a thing called the crushing glitch. And it's basically the collision from enemies just crushing your Pikmin into the terrain and they just disappear for no good reason. That guy is one of two enemies in this game that on a regular base is caused that glitch when they die. And it's really annoying. I've had to reset a lot of runs because I lost one or two Pikmin to that guy's death animation. Which is really stupid. Just really stupid. But hey, the day has barely begun and I already got sh two ship pieces in my hand. And the one with the bread bug that is going to be back at base at any moment, I don't really know. I don't really know. I don't remember when it got back, but hey, the blue onion. So now we're gonna get blue Pikmin. This is basically what we would need to make those remaining ship pieces back in the Forest of Hope not be a pain in the ass. But we only got them now, so yay. And the good old hit the pellet posies before the Pikmin grows. I did that on the first day. Didn't really get to do it on the second day because I killed a bull bulb. Yeah. But hey! That Pikmin has a mouth. Also, I just threw it at the onion. I hit the onion with the Pikmin. I did not intend to do that. I've done that before with the yellow onion. But I w that run didn't really make it. You know how it is. Now, the reason I'm checking my map... You remember the mushroom guy? He is worth 30 Pikmin. And I want those Pikmin to be blue. And the reason I got 
15 Pikmin on that guy instead of the 10 you're required to get is because right up here there is another ship piece and this one takes 15. I also wanted to make sure the mushroom guy got back before the gravity jumper so it would push the mushroom in like that. That is pretty great. I've had runs where I was a little late on getting the red penguin after puff tool, tool so they got a little further up the ramp and then the gravity jumper would push the puff stool all the way up the ramp so it would be up where the pigment were and that would just make it take so much longer for the blue pigment to carry it back but this way it's more or less perfect just kind of perfect and i'm about to do a big math fail right here i'm just throwing these three pigment here then I'm grabbing the four Pikmin and two more, two more Pikmin. That's six plus three and I need ten. For some reason I was remembering that as being the five pellet. I just thought, yeah, five Pikmin, but I'm stupid. But it doesn't matter anyway because Pikmin AI is retarded. You might have noticed that the mushroom only set seven on it. Some of my Pikmin, I don't know why, they just can't figure out how to get a grip on this guy. So, Pikmin AI. As you can see, two of the Pikmin went back to me now. Which is stupid. But anyway, earlier on I said that throwing eight Pikmin at the wall was perfect for the numbers. And just checking where the ship pieces are. And you might notice I have exactly 100 Pikmin. What that means is that no Pikmin will come out of the onion right now. As Alima will say right here, but I'm not. I'm skipping the text because I can. And that just means I won't have to pluck any more Pikmin. But I also need to make sure that I have at least 15 blue Pikmin. And it's a very good thing I have 16 blue Pikmin. Because you might have noticed that one of the blue Pikmin tripped before walking off there. That Pikmin stayed up there, as you'll see in a moment. I get very confused by that because I did not notice that myself. Pikmin are really stupid with the tripping, I swear. And also, I don't get to move. This is like back in the Forest of Hope with the whimsical radar and extraordinary bolt they're just immediately after each other so I don't get to do anything and now the automatic gear is coming in that's the first half of this day is ridiculous it just is and I'm really worried that I was kinda worried that the red pigmen would go into the water I know they can do that they can do it, they're stupid enough to do it. Red Pikmin can't swim. But Red Pikmin are immune to fire. Which is a pretty important part of why I brought so many Red Pikmin and then didn't really protect them from the fiery blowhawks. I don't think I ever mentioned that Red Pikmin are immune to fire. It's kind of obvious once you get the blue Pikmin it's like Oh, they can go in the water, so red pigment can go in fire. It's like some elemental shit going on here. But then the yellow ones don't have electricity in this game. They do in the second game, but in this game, nah, no electricity. I don't remember if I mentioned the fact that all pigment were supposed to be able to pick up bump rocks, but because they couldn't or they didn't get around to adding in electricity. They also, this is where I realized that the blue is missing. That screws a bit with me. But because they couldn't get electricity worked into the game, they just made it so that only the yellow Pikmin could pick up rocks. And right here, I'm taking the Pikmin with me because you might notice that white rock right there. That rock works just like the grass. 
you know, the grass that gives you nectar. So I just didn't want the blue Pikmin to start hitting that, because they'll just do it. Pikmin are stupid. They're just stupid. I also believe that at this point I have exactly 100 red Pikmin, which is kind of funny. I got 4 for the Shearwig, and 3 for the Breadbug, and I had 93 going into this day. That's just kind of funny to me. Yeah. But now, just barely past the half point of the day, halfway through the day, yay. I have five ship pieces, so that's pretty great. That's why I really like this day, or this area. There's just so much you can do right off the bat. But the rest of the day is going to be a little more tame than that, but it's not too bad. Don't think it's like that. Hey. I should just shut up sometimes. Hey. Earlier, I didn't really bother with these guys because there's not really any way they can kill red Pikmin. And I'm just waiting for him to blow off the Pikmin so I can get the rest of them on and kill him just like that. I find that to be the most efficient way to deal with these guys. But for some reason... The, it may just be my timing on it. But they get to do the flamethrower. Preferably they wouldn't get to do the flamethrower attack before I throw a Pikmin on them. And then they would blow it off immediately. And this guy... He... Kind of dangerous. Because... He faced the water. The only way those guys kill Pikmin is if they blow them into the water. That is the only way they can kill red Pikmin. You can literally leave a single red Pikmin on one of those guys. And by the end of the day, he will be dead. I think. Occasionally, the red Pikmin will get ahead and... I think. I haven't tested it, but... I think it's like that. Yeah. But anyway, while those 60 red pigmen are working on a door, and that guy is tripping, that's not so much a while, I'm gonna go ahead and distract these Wallywogs. Like I said, I won't be killing any of them. It's very easy to lose pigmen to these guys. They're just generally a pain in the ass. They're very easy to kill if you're not too worried about losing pigment, but otherwise it's it's just easier to do what I do and distract them with Alima. And I really wish those blue pigment were flower pigment. If it wasn't for the fact that I had to go down to the onion to get out, I think it was 25? 24. 24 of them. Then I could have probably used some of those white rocks to get them all flowered up. But that wasn't really an option. Maybe it was. I haven't done a whole lot of testing on small theories like that, but it works out like this. So why bother? In any case, at that speed, those Pikmin are not going to make it back to base anytime soon. But that's okay. I just need them to get it out of the water. And just like so, it's out of the water, I guess. And that fiery blowhog right there... I think... No, there was definitely seven Pikmin on that. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure I threw seven Pikmin at that guy. But when I turn the camera around, which I should do any moment... No. I'm doing this first. When I get back over there, you will see that there's only six Pikmin on him. I don't know what was going on. For some reason, my Pikmin just didn't want to carry that guy back. It's not really a big issue, but at the end of this day, at the end of this day, this just... 
I guess. I don't really know. Just... I didn't really get... There was something I didn't really manage to do. And again, that Pikmin I just threw... For some reason he didn't grab on. I don't understand it. He's coming right back to me right there. I don't get it. Why is Pikmin AI the worst AI in any video game ever? Okay, maybe you could argue that it's not as bad as Resident Evil 5 AI, which can literally just break the game for you by getting stuck. But, uh, uh, at least I've heard it can do that. I haven't played the game myself, so I'm not speaking from personal experience right here. But the reason I'm doing all of this, getting all of these blue Pikmin, is the next area in this game is very water heavy. Water heavy sounds funny. And also my timing is very bad right here. I realized it a little too late, but it would have been nice to get an additional Pikmin. Just for the sake of it. I'm not sure if I ever explained the fact that the pellets get more Pikmin if you carry it back to the onion of the same color. It's kind of obvious, really. But, but a funny thing I will say about it is... Well... The one pellet gives you two Pikmin if it's the same color. But the five pellet gives you five. I always find it a little bit funny because with the one pellet... I would think the amount of Pikmin... They would give double the amount of Pikmin required to carry it. But for all of the bigger ones, it just gives the amount of Pikmin required to carry it. And for some reason, I don't know why I would think that way. I'm stupid. I'm a weirdo. I am a lot of things, but smart is not one of them. Actually, people say I'm pretty damn smart. It's annoying. Complimenting my intellect when my intellect is not a thing that should be complimented. I don't even know. I'm dissing myself really hard. Maybe it's because of what's coming up. And not so much what's coming up. It's just... Throughout this day, there were several times where I danced around a bit and wasted a little bit of time. And that's very unfortunate because I wanted to blow some crap up. And I don't get to do that. Because I wasted a little bit of time. I'm very close to the end of the day and I just I just didn't think it's, it was worth the risk. Like uh, not so much the risk, but rather the stress. I've had situations where I messed awa around with bomb rocks and tried to be clutch with the timer. That ended in about half of my yellow pigment dying because I threw too many bombs and then something happened. Maybe I still have that footage around somewhere. Maybe. I'm not sure. If I do, I'll have to put it in somewhere. What am I getting myself into? Anyway, this guy's right here. I'm a little afraid of where it takes me, so... On the next day where I go to the forest naval, we'll figure out what that geyser does, where it takes you. Stay tuned! Because that is very exciting, where that geyser takes you. Totally excites. God, that is... That's probably some of the stupidest, silliest... The best I've ever said. I don't really know. I'm not sure I should be the one defining... What... Parts of what I say is the best. Anyway! 
Oliver has discovered blue Pikmin. Yay! He kind of skipped the yellow ones. Just... Just pointing that out. Don't worry, he'll get around to the yellow Pikmin some other day. Maybe tomorrow. We'll see. And then we can also see that I got a lot of blue Pikmin. A lot of blue Pikmin. 93. That's the same amount of red Pikmin I had after Forest of Hope. What the heck? Coincidence. 